this should be an introduction to the video. Okay, <laughs> that's what we'll call it. Um, so I have done a response video to this conundrum fellow. Um, just a bunch of counter arguments about, um, you know, this accusation that we're too brutal or too crass or t t too in some kind of negative way. We're just, the solution is too aggressive, too harsh, too something. So even though it works, and it's you know the only real option in my opinion, and I'll defend that against this accusation that it's too something, whatever this too is, you know it's unjustifiably too whatever, uh, you know <laughs> it's too violent. That somehow the, there's lots of ways we can get to the same end, accomplish the same task, save just as many people in the lifeboat. So this is really sort of a lifeboat argument. Um, there's a guy, you know, in the lifeboat, and he's just t explaining the logic, just explaining how we don't have food and water. <clears throat> if we're going to get to land, it's going to be at least five days. We don't have food and water for that, so it's not going to happen, all right? We all can't go. We all can't win. Half of us can win, but all of us can't win. So now it's just a choice. We've got this brutal choice left. You know, we just have to figure out, you know, who's not going to be there, you know, who's not going to arrive five days from now. And it's just a fact, you know. You're, that's all there is here. It's not, there's no joy. There's no happiness. There's no nothing. There's just the truth. And his plan is all of you drown. So his plan is fail. Fail to save the future. That's what he's doing. He's just saying, I'm choosing failure. And I'm saying, no, I want a plan that gets me there. So I'm going to try to win. I'm not going to try to lose. I'm not going to accept just failure and just say, there, I quit. I, I'm going to go eat potato chips and watch the Super Bowl. Fuck that. All right. It's that simple, really. I mean, that's the fundamental argument. Um, <clears throat> right. So, the rest of the video is the rest of the video. It's like, you know, it's a lot of it. A couple hours, probably. Blah, blah, blah. A lot of stuff I've been over before. So, you know, it's your choice. Watch it. Don't watch it. But don't complain about it. It's just too silly. <laughs> okay. I'm warning you. It's a long video with a lot of redundancy. So, don't complain. Okay. Don't watch it if you're not in the mood for some redundant commentary. All right. <clears throat> That's enough. So I should just hit this button. And it should continue, right? I, immediately after I hit this button, it's going to start. It's really going to happen that way. It really should, anyway, once I tie all this crap together. All right. Should be back in such. Or something like that. Anyway, continuing. Or starting with conundrum blah 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 let's understand he just doesn't have a plan to fix anything he doesn't have any idea how to fix anything all he can do is wish and hope blah 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 yeah fine that's absolutely useless so no thank you very much uh, outlining problems and outlining zero solutions just isn't of any value whatsoever hmm interesting is something going to happen? I have some oh. short commentary as a response to In Mendem's response to my critique of Ephelism. Here it so again, the critique wasn't a critique that makes any sense. It's just basically saying, I don't like your solution. Its solutions just causes too much trouble. It's too much work. Uh, you know, we have to lift up something and then put it on a table, and it's just too much effort. I can't be bothered. So you come up with a perfect solution in which everything happens perfectly and without any effort or I don't have to do anything uh, it's not a solution so I really don't want to hear about it he obviously can't to save his life he could never fix anything in a crisis or do anything in a crisis he has absolutely useless he's just a morbid sulking useless sack of shit and he's making commentaries <laughs> it's just so useless goes I'm sure some sort of keywords will come up. I stopped listening as soon as he said, Well, the Ephelists say you have to kill everybody. No, that's not what they say. I mean, it's, you know, it's not that complicated. The idea is to stop procreation. It's like the... It's sort of funny because, you know, they play my clips and they really should interrupt more often because, man, that's, yeah, okay, it's very good arguments I make. So you've just proven my point again. And it's like, you apparently can't listen. 
because you, you aren't doing anything to refute the arguments being made. I have no desire to kill anything. I don't wish to kill anything. I would be very happy if nothing ever has to die ever again on planet Earth. Now, if you can show me on a blackboard or somewhere where that solution works, fine. But until then, it's just absolute mush. Okay, it's not going to work that way. Reality doesn't work that way. Everybody can't have, it's like even the vaccine. No, everybody can't have it tomorrow. There's, a, there's rules to reality. Reality just doesn't provide you with these wonderful answers and these perfect solutions. That's not how it works. So, and I'm not even spending much time just pointing out that, well, yeah, when push comes to shove and it's time to go to war, well, that might be what we have to do. That's how you have to solve problems sometimes. Am I saying that's what the first thing we should jump to is just put on our soldier shoots and start shooting the fuck out of everybody? No, let's negotiate. Let's talk about it. Uh, let's do everything we can to avoid any unnecessary inconveniences whatsoever. I don't wish to even inconvenience anybody. All right, I'm just trying to explain that, uh, you know what, there's a tiny little thing you do with your brain, a little game you can play where you can change what it is you want out of life. And you can see a new strategy to get there, and the strategy doesn't have anything to do with you walking on a bunch of children to do it. You don't have to build your bridges out of children. You don't have to build your stepping stones out of children. You can find happiness. You can build a little staircase to happiness, and you don't have to step on any little kids' heads at all. And it's true. It's a fact. Especially now. You, know, you can get virtual you know, happiness toys now. Yeah, you don't have to step on anybody. Uh, you know, hole in the dike kind of thing, okay? There's cess being poured out of a giant cess pool. And you want to say, what's the easiest way to fix the problem? To scoop up the mess that's on the floor or to just plug the hole? So that's the first thing you have to figure out is whether you want to spend eternity knitting band-aids or do you want to spend a much shorter amount of time working aggressively for a cure? Which one makes more sense? Which one's more likely to get you the best solution? So I could make the argument that that's part of this conversation is, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're less likely to have to endure a bad result uh, if you invest your resources appropriate from the beginning. If you invest in a road to nowhere, you'll go nowhere. You have to try to invest in a road that has some chance of getting somewhere, somewhere good. And so, yes, plugging the hole is a little complicated. I mean, stopping reproduction for all the sentient beings on Earth probably isn't going to happen in some sort of little benign way. But nothing happens in a little benign way. <laughs> evolution isn't at all benign. So, yes, you kind of have to use some evolution. And some evolution is sometimes things get exterminated by evolution, okay, by the process. So he thinks this is a draconian I love violence statement. I, I, yeah, my first choice is let's kill them, crush them, destroy them. That's what he hears, right? <laughs> but you can't, like I said, you can't reason with people this unreasonable. In fact, more species have been annihilated than currently exist, and that's just a truth. And it's sad, but yeah, that's the way it'll have to properly happen. But obviously... Yeah, and it's just a statement that's just saying, even if you fix things and you educate people, there's some people who are uneducatable. Just like there's some kids who are born who are like homicidal from the day they're born. They're just insane. They're crazy. And you're not going to fix their crazy. And you can't say, well, we have to just suspend all of reality because they're crazy. You know, it's like saying, oh, we will have to let the kid go to school. Well, he'll kill all the other students. Well, I guess we'll just have to close the school then. That would be the irrational answer. It doesn't have to happen that way for human beings. <laughs> so, again, that's just more nonsense. And if you think animals are going to have some crisis because in a millisecond their life is going to end, well... You can make that argument that that's the worst fate possible for these little creatures. But no, that's the best fate possible. Yeah, so I don't know how you defeat that argument with anything logical. 
only a spiritual or mystical person could think it could possibly be a bad solution, one that is completely painless and it doesn't cause any philosophical issue. There's no, oh, the, the morality of it. No, there is none. There, there's no moral dilemma to have to deal with. A bunch of organisms won't exist, which is the plan, and they won't exist in a very, very, um, without any, uh, nothing squirming on the ground going, kill me, nothing squirming on the ground going, stop hurting me, nothing squirming on the ground going, I'm on fire. None of that has to happen. It literally is, of all the possibilities, they couldn't win any bigger than to be instantly killed by a nuclear explosion. <laughs> That's about as big a win as you could possibly have. Uh, is there a logical counter-argument? No, there isn't. There's no logical counter-argument. If you believe Better Never to Have Been, the title of Benatar's book, if you're an anti-natalist, a Benatarian anti-natalist, well, Benatar already said it applies to animals. He just didn't want to have that conversation. But, I mean, obviously, he understands that that dilemma exists for the animal kingdom. Um, it's just that, you know, he's afraid of that conversation. But the fact is, is can you make the explanation? Can you give me the description of the horror? Where is the horror? Show it to me. Draw me a picture of the horror. Gary has at me when I say that Ephelists claim you got to kill everybody. All right, so again, this is just bullshit. Well, you're a liar. You're a silly, absolute liar. I should just stop playing the video, right? Because this is just a pathetic lie. Nobody's making that claim. Nobody. Nobody rational. Nobody anybody's affiliated with. Nobody anybody's connected to. So, yes, you found a lunatic who says, I want to kill everybody. Okay, that's your problem. It's not my problem. I didn't link you to any lunatic that says that. I didn't talk about any lunatic that says that. I didn't do anything like that. So, you're responding to fucking me. So, respond to what I fucking say, not what some lunatic says, okay? That's not my problem. You want me to find every other whack job who sits there and wears silly hats and say you endorsed it because you wear a silly hat? I mean, just shut up, liar. <laughs> I mean, that's just too pathetic. Requiring me to take responsibility what crazy people say? Not my job. Not my obligation, you lying sack of shit. So all I have to do is find one Benatarian anti-natalist who's crazy, and therefore I destroyed Benatar's arguments. Is that your fucking pathetic argument, you silly prancing poofter? And tries to set the record straight by saying that's not what they say. Uh, it's not what anybody has said. Anybody rational, and you damn well know it. No rational person says, kill them all right now. Nobody. So it's just nonsense. It's just, and it's a pathetic lie. It's not even close to a reasonable, it's just a pathetically stupid lie. But after a few moments, he actually says that killing all animals by a, a nuclear explosion is the best thing that can happen to them. Right, and will you give me any counter argument? How would it not be? What would be the tragedy? We all know they would have been better off never to have been. Everybody knows that. So what exactly, we agree on that. So what exactly would be the tragedy? They don't suffer at all. They don't know. They don't fear. They don't anything. It's completely non-tragic. They don't die of cancer. They don't get beat up by the other cat. They don't, uh, you know, have to endure the infections. They don't have to endure the part that's better never to have done. So they don't have to do any more better never to have done. They don't have to, their prodigy doesn't have to do it forever. Okay. <laughs> and you are telling me it's a tragedy. Well, I'm asking you to explain the tragedy, which you will never do. So there's just no point. What was all that panting about then? So, what, what's the panting part? Uh, the point is, is that yes, if I if it was up to me, I get it done, get it done quick, get it done now. Okay, the sooner the better, because it is true. Better never to have been. It's true. Okay, we're all better off dead, but the fact is, we live in a world that needs fixing. And if that world is still going to exist, then we need to live to fix it. 
that's a fact, asshole. All right. So if you can fix the problem, then I would be better never to have binning right now. So if I didn't sense meaning, okay, purpose, all right, then yes, I'd be better never to have binning. <laughs> because I know I'd be better off not having cancer and dying of it. Oh, shit. So again, you know, do your little doom mongering and your little scare tactics, but they're only going to be effective on a moron. So that's all you're saying, right? I'll just trick the stupid people by using like murder words and stuff. Yeah, well, go ahead. Trick the stupid people. All right. That'll be your strategy. Right. That's your contribution to mankind is to be a henny penny, a useless piece of garbage. All right. The sky isn't falling. Nothing horrible would happen. All of this stuff that you think is so terrible and you can't define it. You can't describe it in any kind of rational terms. It's clearly just your ra irrational psychiatric issue. You have a psychiatric issue with this idea of termination because you really don't believe it's better never to have been. You really don't believe in the theme here at all my strategy is going to be to be honest <laughs> okay and the honest truth is yes for the lower forms of life the ones that are less articulate and less capable of having conversations about how it's not that big a deal not to have babies and that you know condoms aren't taboo yes those creatures will have to be in some efficient manner uh, euthanized and the horror is again, dot 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 Gary says I use some scare tactics and they're gonna fool the stupid whereas he's just being honest but notice I said nothing different from Gary all right so that's a lie right of course he has said different than Gary so there's no there's no argument here. I'm not pro violence. I'm not for a violent solution. But if you can explain to me how it can be done practically without that ever being a possibility, I'm all for it. Show me that. Show me that diagram. Show me the plan that makes some sort of sense. You know, that isn't like underwear gnomes. You know, some kind of plan that actually has a chance of succeeding. So show me your business plan here. Show me your strategy, okay, for winning. And you can't do that, and you won't do that. So there really isn't any credibility to your argument. You're just saying, oh, well, let's wait for the perfect solution. Like it's out there somewhere, waiting. But no, it's not. Any solution is not going to be the perfect solution. Nothing is perfect on this planet. There are no perfect solutions. We both noticed that ethelists want to kill uh, so there's, there's just no point no point everyone gary uses the word euthanize and thinks he's honest i use mass killing yeah so again it's again it's, it's taking all the integrity out of the word so if somebody's going out and they're, they're culling animals because they know there's way too many of them they're all diseased they're all going to die horribly so they go out and cull them they put a bullet in their head and they're crying while they're doing it. They hate it. They're not, they're not pleasure seekers. They're not out hunting for trophies. They're doing a very sad job. Just like some doctor who has to inject a child with some horrible chemicals to cure their cancer. Or to fight their cancer. Do you really think he's maliciously sitting there having fun torturing children? Should I call him that? Should I say he's a child torturer? Yeah. Fuck you. Uh, you know, you're just, you're the definition of manipulating rhetoric. That's all this is. This is just manipulative uh, semantics. You're using these little funky words because you want to label something something. And it's clearly been stated, overtly been stated over and over and over again that this has nothing to do with any desire to do any violence to anything ever. It has to do with pragmatic, rational acceptance of the fact that the mess doesn't get cleaned up without risk. Somebody has to put on their little bomb disposal suit and risk having their fucking face blown off. It's just a fact. Something's going to have to be in the fire. Okay, you, can't, you just can't have a fire without burning some fuel. 
you can't have the omelet without breaking some eggs. We have a ton of metaphors for the fact that, damn it, it's just unfortunate. But yeah, that's the way it works. Real solutions aren't going to be easy. They might be really, really hard. And omnicide. And that somehow makes me dishonest? Yes, you're completely dishonest. It's right there for everybody to hear. This has nothing to do with homicide. Nobody said this. If somebody unplugs Karen Ann Quinlan, they're not committing a homicide. They're not killing her. Oh, I hate her. I want to kill her. I'll unplug her. None of that's taking place. You're just lying about the intent, lying about motivation, and it just makes you a disgustingly despicable, creepy, shitty human being. But I already knew that. Everybody else listening probably already knew that. You're a shitty human being. Funny how that works. Coming into existence is a negative for all sentient beings. Oh, who cares whether it's all or five? You're deciding. You're going to make a victim. <laughs> so this I'm just pointing out that it doesn't really matter how expensive this is. Like whether it's preposterously overpriced or or ludicrously overpriced or insanely overpriced or blah blah it's overpriced as soon as you're imposing suffering without consent you're done playing the game the game can't then be you're played tell that that's the simple truth i'm articulating here is that the game is over as soon as you make one mongoloid child you're done playing the game it's not a game you have any right to play um, it's okay, I'm worth it. All right, so I've given you a clear analogies, and you're just pretending they don't exist. You're saying you're going to go to the fun park, Disneyland. You have no evidence you're doing anything constructive. There's no wound in the universe you're healing. There's you're not curing cancer. You're not getting some greater, some greater benefit. You're not driving there to turn off the cesspool valve. You're not doing anything that's going to have any redeeming or functional value. And yet you're going to impose pain and suffering. There's nothing you're fixing by existing. There's nothing, anything's going to happen. You're just going to satisfy a little heroin addiction you have. And, you know, you'll go to Disney World and get a little boner and say, oh, I felt good for a while. And then you'll drive home. And you're going to do it by tying some other asshole, okay, uh, you know, to a rope and bouncing him down the highway and beating the shit out of him. Somebody else is going to pay the price for your little bit of fun. Right. Just this a metaphor for the fact that there, the risk is obvious and it's systemic. You can't evade the risk. Um, you can evade parts of it maybe. You can check your genetic code. You can do some different things to try to prevent the worst case scenario. But the fact is that they're, they're on the dice and you're rolling the dice. And therefore the dice game just can't be played because you're playing it with somebody else's fate. You're not playing it with your own. Right, the people in the mental institutions, the kids dying of leukemia, all the, all the uh, stuff that's going to happen as a consequence of this risk behavior you're defending. Yes, this rape of the future's um, welfare. And it's that simple. The future is disposable. It can be abused. That's all the procreators are doing. So they could be qualified as rapists. They could be qualified as criminals against the welfare um, the rights of the future victims and um, so they could be punished um, purely for that crime alone I'm not suggesting we need to do that I'm just saying that's any any unnecessarily um, unpleasant on any unpleasant uh, um, permutations of what a cure will require fixing the problem will require it doesn't really matter because we're talking about criminals anyway. You know, these people, sh you know, by all rights, they should have been punished by, you know, the, the universe should be punishing them for taking such obnoxious risks with other people's welfare. They should already be in prison, <laughs> okay? They're already criminals, all right? So I'm not uh, suggesting we're punishing victims. No, we're punishing the guilty. We're we're not punishing them. We're we're um, appropriately applying a necessary. If there is a necessary inconvenience, we're applying it to people actually guilty of the crime that would deserve it. That's the point. Gary says that I'm deciding I'm gonna make a victim. 
No. You're defending the victims. You're defending their authority. You're defending their position in the social system. You're defending their rights to keep imposing this mess, to keep creating it, to put, keep putting money in the vending machine, to keep uh, pumping electricity into the menace okay, of the machine. So, yes, you are their ally. I'm actually not. I am yes, you are. You are overtly working at it. Every bit of your video, every bit of your effort seems exactly toned to exactly that purpose. It has no other function than to defend the guilty. Defend what they're doing is impossible to stop. Give them all uh, eternal and, and infinite rights. That's all you're saying. They have infinite rights. They have a right to, to prevent me from protecting the future. They have some right to soil the future. I don't have a right to protect the future. That's all you're saying. You're defending their right to commit the crime. You're not defending my right to stop the crime. It's that simple, that obvious. You're their ally. Not making a pro-natalist argument. Yes, you are. You're doing everything a pro-natalist argument needs to look like. That's exactly what you look like. Okay? So... You're exactly what they need to get across the finish line. You're exactly what they need. You might as well just pick them up and carry them. You're giving them such help. Does Gary even know what he's arguing against? Doesn't seem like it. Yeah, I'm arguing against irrational, loop de doo silly nutballs. Whether they're having kids or whether they're holding up signs say, Please don't have kids. Yeah, uh, they're just this useless. Okay, yeah. Somebody who can't do anything, all right, who has no arms, legs, and can't even use his mouth, and can't even use his brain to construct useful sentences. You have no utility to the cause. And, in fact, you're in the way because the noises you're making sound like, you have a right to have kids. That's what it sounds like. Right. Yes. So it's risky behavior, and you don't have a risk take risk with other people's welfare permit. There we go. There. It's just you know simple enough. They're the criminals. They're the ones threatening the future. Who gave you the permit? God, evolution, dirt, a worm. Yeah. No, you didn't get a a qualified permit. One that I have to respect. That's certainly true. Gary asks, who gave you the permit to risk someone else's welfare? Well, Gary, who gave you the permit to press the red button? Right there, so he didn't answer the question, right? He didn't answer the question. Yeah, and my permit, I, I've claimed it clearly. I've stated right overtly. I'm doing a trespass. There's no doubt about it. All right, but all I can do is reason. Okay, and until somebody comes up with a reasonable argument telling me how it's in any possible way the wrong choice, you know, without saying something like, well, what if God exists or something? Some silly thing, like, you know, what if, you know, fairy godmothers are real? <laughs> you know, until they come up with some kind of rational argument, I have to go with what my intellect says, and it's logical. So, again, you're saying you won't do what's logical, okay, because you're inhibited by some doubt. I don't have any such doubt. So what do I do? What am I supposed to do? You're saying I'm supposed to just defy my own logic and not do what I know is the right thing to do. And I'm saying, well, no, I can't do that. And clearly I'm saying the procreators clearly can't defend they have any right to do what they're doing. They can't give you an explanation for why they should be allowed to impose untold suffering on future victims. They haven't explained to any kind of reasoning at all. They haven't explained how they're worth it or their kids are worth it or any of it's worth it. So until they make that rational argument, I can't do anything at trial, right? I mean, I can't say, oh, there's extenuating circumstances. They were making a reasonable choice. I can't say any of that because I'm not getting any of that reasoning. So if you can't tell the difference, again, I can't help you. I mean, obviously, you're really, 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 really stupid. So, I mean, this is a little bit of kind of a subtle philosophical concept that maybe just too far, way, way over your head. All right, but that's the reasoning behind it is that um, there's, there's causes that have very good defenses and causes that have very bad defenses. I'm saying I can defend my choice. They can't defend their violation. 
there could be a circumstance where you can defend lots of activities, right? Lots of things that might be suspect by somebody else on the surface where you could perfectly explain why you did it. And it would be perfectly rational, like speeding to the hospital with your pregnant wife or some other kind of thing. There's a perfectly rational explanation for the behavior. Not that it's excusable, but the fact is, is that you can explain why I didn't seem to have a choice. It doesn't matter. The point to my point, are, my argument is, okay, is that, yes, it's about imposition and it's about this point that there's nothing to be accomplished here but satisfy a heroin addiction that shouldn't exist in the first place. Right, so until they can come up with some better explanation for what they're accomplishing besides gratifying some bizarre notion in their head about their ego or what they want out of their life or that they want to step on a kid's head, uh, until they can do that, rape one, who knows, maybe it's just, maybe every, all the parents are child molesters anyway, I mean, you know, what, what other kind of purpose can it serve? So maybe half of them are child molesters, for fuck's sake. I mean, that's why they have kids. It's just because they get to do some free molesting. You don't cure it by feeding it. You stop it. Gary says that his point is about imposition and that there's nothing to be accomplished here other than to satisfy our addictions. You don't cure it by feeding it. You stop it. He says. Yeah, there we go. So that sounds like a pretty convincing argument. I don't see how you're going to counter argue that. Yep, pretty much done. You're done. You're cooked. You're finished. You're dead in the water. Blah, blah, blah. You got nothing, I'm sure. I don't necessarily disagree. Ah, <laughs> there. See, yeah. See, so you're cooked. You're done. You're finished. Okay, the conversation's really over. You're just saying, I don't want to do fix anything. I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit in my chair and mope. All right, and I'm saying, oh, shit, I know that somebody's going to have to do something. And if nobody's doing something, then I'll get up and I'll try to do something. And maybe I won't do it really well, and maybe I'll fail and all that kind of crap. But I'm not just going to sit here and just mope. Fuck that. With that, I'm simply not convinced as to the method of stopping it. Uh, yeah, well, I'm convinced the first method is just to be as honest as possible and have the conversation. That's the first thing you do is honestly walk up to the, the society and say to the society, your values suck, okay? You really are torturers. You really are terrible imposers. Um, and until you can <clears throat> fix these problems that exist in the world, you have no right to be laying eggs, right? The nest is ugly and disgusting. I mean, we can point to the shit in the nest. We can point to how dirty and filthy and disgusting it is. All right. And then let, force them to explain how they have some ethical right to lay eggs in it. They don't. And that's clear. That's what you do. You make the argument. That's not what you're doing. You're sitting here just sitting here throwing marbles in front of me to dance around um, <clears throat> with a bunch of uh, excessive idiotic vernacular. And you'll concede nothing. You'll concede nothing. I can overtly tell you I have no bloodlust. I, I, I hate blood. I don't like violence at all. It uh, makes me want to throw up. <laughs> I have no interest in it at all. I don't like violence anywhere. I don't like it. It's not something I like, okay? So, but I do understand how evil the Nazis are, and I do understand <clears throat> that we have to go fight. Yes, yeah, so what are the obligations of intelligence? Is that complicated? Oh, nothing else has, we do. What's the, what's the, what's the smartest person's responsibility in any circumstance? The plane is about to crash. Well, I guess you find the person on the plane, right? The pilot there has this heart attack, whatever, and the co-pilot trips and kills himself getting into the chair. Um, yeah, you just find the most competent person. You say, fix it. Okay, that's what you do. That's what intelligence does. Intelligence doesn't... Right, so find somebody more intelligent to, than me to make a more articulate and more sensitive and caring... Ar Look, Benatar is really good, right? I mean, Benatar makes great arguments. Uh, he's very disciplined, very careful, uh, you know, unemotional. So that's all very positive. But he's also not getting to the nitty gritty. He's also not getting to the real end game. He's just talking about a fable philosophy, basically. He's just talking about a theoretical idea of it. He's not talking about putting it into practice. He's not talking about working on the world to have it happen. 
um, and that's when it's going to get a little more. That's when the that's that's like I said. That's when real rubber hits real asphalt, and uh, it's going to get a little harder to do. It's a more work. So, but I'm just saying. I'm not sitting here saying ah. Uh, my way is the only way. I'm saying I haven't heard a better way yet. I haven't heard a better strategy yet. I haven't heard better <laughs> arguments yet. So show me somebody making the better arguments. I'll go support them. Say, oh, let's just have a random, you know, let's just pick somebody by, let's just numbers in a hat or some other kind of retarded method to decide who's going to fix the problem. So yes, intelligence with intelligence comes responsibility. Duh. Gary asks, what are the obligations of intelligence? That's a good question. Okay. Yeah, it has a simple answer. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, it, the obligation is for it to not to be silly, for it to be rational, to do the logic thing. It's right there in front of you. The facts point. Just follow the facts. There you go. Follow the facts. Barry says that the most intelligent should fix the problem. Okay, but can we trust that Gary is the most intelligent and when did gary say that's your obligation that never happened ever never happened i never said it i've never said anything of the sort i've never said anything like it all i've ever said is that i make arguments i i i'm i will make arguments okay so if somebody um can bring an argument i can bring a counter argument i can make an argument that's my contribution i can make arguments <clears throat> And that's what I'm doing. I'm not doing anything else. I'm not asking for followers. Am I? No. Can you make? Can you play any video where I've ever solicited people to follow me, trust me, or do any of that shit? When did I ever ask anybody ever to trust me? I mean, you know, just keep lying again. You know, just keep trying to assert that I'm just looking for a bunch of sheeple and I'll go ba 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 and they'll follow me. That's not what's happening here at all. There's no evidence that's what's happening here. I'm wishing people to understand my arguments. I'm not wishing them to follow the arguments. I'm wishing them to understand the arguments. So just keep lying about me and my mission and my purpose and my function. Just keep lying and pretending it has some other agenda than merely to inform people. Merely to point out this is the logic I ran to in my life. Okay, it's not that complicated uh, and such. And that's it. There's no, nothing else. There's nothing more complicated here. Yeah, it should be back and such. So we'll continue. So again, this argument is just about really a kind of pragmatic argument. Um, they think wishful thinking is all you need, or all you need to do is say something like, um, "Resources are uh, infinite, and you know we can have, everybody can have everything, and we we just have to reorganize society, and everybody can just." have all the leisure time they want nobody has to work because everything will just happen for free or some kind of stuff like that a politician can say you know everything for everybody he can promise all kinds of stuff and then have no way to you know i'll give you everybody health care and i give everybody 50 days off and i give maternity leave and i give them you know uh, early retirement and i give you know you can promise anything you want but you won't be able to deliver any of that stuff so um but if you can i'll vote for you okay but you know, your, the argument is is whether I should say, hey, I, I don't have anything against, you know, people wishing on stars. Well, I sort of do, because instead of wishing on stars, they're not doing the hard work, which is to sell the real argument, the truth. You know, and the truth will be that somebody does have to pay taxes, and somebody does have to, you know, go to work, and somebody does have to be productive, and all of that kind of crap. There's a reality here to running the commune, or whatever it's going to be. And yeah, it could be more efficient than the system we have, but... It's not going to be for free. There's no free lunches. And they want the free lunch solution, and they're saying, I'm opposing it. Well, I'm not opposing it if you can actually deliver it. But all you are is promises. You're not, you don't deliver anything. So, you know, yeah, I think you are kind of a problem. Um, you know, because I am trying to compete as a real alternative, and you're providing a fake alternative, a placebo. And so why shouldn't I find you kind of an obstruction? Because you're promising what can't be delivered. And that just makes it harder for me to get people to do what they need to do to deliver the real goods, which is a better solution. A real fix, instead of a fix that won't work. You know, the real glue salesman, their job is made much harder 
when the fakes show up saying they can glue anything to anything and blah, 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 they have super glue. Yeah, it's, it's a, you're just in my way, <laughs> frankly. Duh. Gary asks, what are the obligations of intelligence? That's a good question. Gary says that the most intelligent should fix the problem. Okay, but can we trust that Gary is the most intelligent being and he... So I already I answered this, so sorry, it's a little bit of a repeat. Um, but obviously I'm not saying I am. I'm just saying so far I'm the most intelligent person I've heard on the subject. So if somebody else shows up saying something more intelligent than me, you let me know, okay, and I'll be their biggest fan. This solution is the best one or even a valid one? And my solution is what? My solution is making the argument to people and explaining to them, because most people I think are genuinely not stupid, and they don't want to heart things, they don't want to cause harm, they don't want to steal, they, they don't want to step on babies' heads to get to their little happiness, to paradise. They don't want to be um, cruel and wasteful and stupid. And so you help them understand how that's what they're endorsing, and that's what you're endorsing by excusing it, by making excuses for, oh, there's nothing that can be done, there's nothing, we can't do anything, we just sit in our chair and mope. No, we can do a lot more than that. Uh, look, we can do it tomorrow, okay? It's theoretically possible. Nuclear bombs don't have any limit to how big a one you can make and how big a mess you can make. So if we started tomorrow saying, let's make the doomsday, let's make the earth splitter, um, we could get it done in 20 years. We don't have to change anti-natalism policy at all. We don't have to say, oh, we have to make a whole bunch of billions and billions of people. Attrition would take care of it. So we got 7 billion people. You think you need 7 billion people to do this? No, you don't need 7 billion people. So this has nothing to do with any, oh, in the short run, we need to feed procreation. No, there's no supporting procreation. So just, just lie. Gary says we can do it tomorrow. No, we can't. All right, so you're an idiot. Yeah, we can. So you're just a liar and an idiot. You don't understand anything. So you're an idiot. <laughs> you know, we could have landed on the moon in two years. You know, it just takes money. That's all. You invest in it, it happens. We invested in making a nuclear bomb and we made one. It's not that, you know, this isn't all that tricky. You need a lot of time to convince enough people you need to so again it, I don't have to convince most of the, the civilized world again is already convinced in the sense that they already by their own volition or conceding uh, procreation is um, um, challenging and it's not a challenge they want as they're in their personal life and so it's not a big philosophical leaf to understand well, the reason why I don't want it in my personal life is because, yeah, it's not just some simple thing. You just don't hatch babies. It's an obligation. It's a, and it's there's lots of difficulties it creates. So, I mean, obviously the procreation is down because people actually think of it as a burden. So they're figuring that part out. So we're already halfway there. Time to create your doomsday machine. <clears throat> okay. So again, that, that's that's nothing. Okay, that's the simple part. Um, no problem at all, and, and we know how tides turn. I mean, you know, you can, you, the people are sheeple. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. Come on, quit playing a game. The sheeple, um, they they they're they're so focused on. They get one thing in their head and they go right after it. Um, and so yeah, a few few celebrities jump on board and no problem. That's why you require people to procreate until this is done. So that's just nonsense. You don't need seven billion, don't need six billion, don't need four billion, don't need two billion. So that's just nonsense. Oh, I mean, 99% of the people on Earth are completely unproductive. Okay, it's just a fact. Okay, there's a tiny percentage of the human race who creates all the productive value, does all the good work, and the rest of them are just feeding off of their productivity. That's how bad our societies are. That's how dirty and filthy the nest is that we create, the, the way we create human beings and make them. They're, they waste so much resource. They waste their brains. They waste everything trying to sh 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 you know, rip each other off, steal each other's money. Uh, the inefficiencies are grotesque.
I mean, it's just so idiotic. He just sits there and spends whatever it is, how far are we into this video? 11 minutes pointing out exactly why it's perceived as negative. And then he says, why would an intelligence think there's anything to fix when something's negative? So I could make this simple analogy. There's a bunch of... All right, so he's conceded the argument. It's broken. And he's complaining that fixing it will require work. And he doesn't want to do any work. That's a simple, simple answer. Put it, put it as simple as possible. That's, what, that's all this is about. He's a lazy, you know, <laughs> butt fucker who just couldn't care less. He's so selfish and so self-absorbed. He thinks it's all about him. The sewage pouring into your living room through a pipe, you know, that has a valve on it. What do you do? Do you just live in the sewage or do you turn the pipe off? Duh. And he's saying, oh, I have some problem with figuring out why a human being would be compelled to fix a problem. Oh, I don't know what, I never met human beings that are ever compelled to fix problems. That humans never do that. They never try to satisfy uh, a condition and make, improve a condition. They never spend any head. Right. So, sorry again, this whole argument is just about the fact that he thinks there's some other solution. He won't articulate it, he won't defend it, he won't state this is the right answer. He won't do any of that. All he'll do is criticize me because he doesn't like the answer. But he hasn't pointed out how the answer isn't perfectly correct. That, yes, you're, this isn't going to be the, the end game is not going to be something where everybody's got a smile on their face. Just won't be. Effort or money or anything on ever trying to be comfortable versus uncomfortable. Oh, fuck. Too stupid. And it's not clear how they can claim to know that people have an obligation to do anything, let alone pursue their... All right, so again, he doesn't think there's a logical obligation. That the definition of your function is how well you interact with the world that exists. And that the very definition of your function is, is if you make the world a better place, better than what you got it, or worse than what you got it. You'll either be productive, clean it up, or you'll be unproductive, make it messier. That's your two choices. Be an asshole or not be an asshole. Period. Type of solution they imagine. Right. So, so he may, he's just saying that he doesn't understand why an intelligence would understand a word like efficiency or fair or um, you know clean versus dirty, oiled versus uh, you know broken, you know burn up. Uh, why an intelligence would make a, a motor that could run for uh, 10 hours rather than 10 seconds. He doesn't understand that. Right. We're just here. That's what intelligence for is fixing problems. That's why we have it. It's a problem solver. That's what intelligence does. It solves problems. That's why we have it. That's why evolution created it. It's because it gives an organism advantage because it solves problems. He's telling us honestly, oh, this is a complex argument. I can't understand why there would be any initiative or any in incentive for us, a reasoning, sensible organism to figure out how to make knives and forks, to make it more efficient and cleaner to eat. Yeah, so it's more explicitly the argument is why they'd want to stop rapists, why they'd want to stop people who are torturing children. And that's what people are doing. That's what procreators are doing. They're torturing children for their own gratification. It's a fact. Why would an intelligent person want to stop people from torturing things? Oh, that's just silly. Why would they feel an obligation to do that? That's silly. No, it's perfectly what brains are supposed to do. Their food. Of course they would. You're fucking retarded. Gary thinks I'm saying that there's nothing to fix. What I No, you're saying that there's no reason to fix it. That's what you just said. Why would somebody think fixing things is a thing to do? <laughs> yeah, that's what you said. Actually said... An it... obligation. Why would you think they would think they had an obligation? It's the obligation of intelligence. is not to make the problem worse, but to make the problem better. That's what intelligence does. It sees a problem and it says, make it better, don't make it worse. Fuck. That I'm skeptical of the fix proposed by Ephelis. Uh, again, there's no fix proposed by Ephelis beyond having the conversation. Where, where is this documented plan beyond this, the fact that the animals will have to be 
uh, taken out um, in some other method than conversation. They're, they're just not going to be able to get it when you tell them to no, stop having babies now, right? You're going to wear a condom now, right? I mean, that's not going to work. So, yeah, you have to use some other kind of method on the animals, uh, humans included, who can't understand. Okay, well, go ahead and disagree all you want, but you're not going to be able to show me how your happiness came from anything other than your addiction to the heroin. That your silly little fantasies of a romantic conquest or whatever the fuck you have is some sort of fantasy or fantasy is clearly just... So, unfortunately, this is all out of order, you know. Um, so there's no continuity in this response. Made out of an addiction created in your psychology or in your physiology. We're addicted to air, we're addicted to food, and we're addicted to some other... Right, so there's no nothing to save here. So he, he's obviously a liar in the sense that there's clearly some reason he wants to preserve humanity. He wants to somehow eliminate the problem without getting rid of humanity. So he's not really um, an anti-natalist, frankly. He's some utopianist, uh, some kind of other kind of agenda. Uh, because I wouldn't even have to make this argument to somebody who's an anti-natalist. The futility argument is the futility argument. There's nothing to accomplish here. You can't make an, a being without giving him a problem for his brain to solve. There's no other function for the brain than solving problems. So how can you create a utopia that has problems to be solved? That doesn't make any sense. Perfluous nonsense that has something to do with making us feel like our dick is bigger or you know, we're great, or we're wonderful, and that ego thing feeds us. And it's nothing but... Yes, it's nothing but a heroin. Your adrenaline, your, your, your hormones, your chemistry is just keeping you addicted. And that's all it is, is an addiction. An addiction. It's a simple fucking addiction. So go ahead and make your rational argument that satisfying an addiction is intrinsically valuable. Well, it's not. I don't think by any reasoning can be shown to be have any value whatsoever. You're just creating a mess and then cleaning up the mess and saying there's some victory in that. Now, that that's probably the best argument. I've been making that one for years. So all we can do is make a mess and then clean up some of it and say, God, I'm such a hero. Look, I cleaned up the mess. Then you made the mess. The mess is in your own psychology. You didn't clean anything up. No. You, you cleaned up your own psychiatric problem. You, you, you pooed in the living room and then cleaned up half of it and, and walked around like you're a hero. It's ridiculous how silly existence is. And again, if that's outside of any kind of notion that it requires hard deprivation for you to have any of those fantasies in the first place. I mean, there was a time I thought virtual reality would be a good idea, but... No, he's letting me make my video for the second time, I guess. Um, so yeah, I've already made this argument that, you know, we can all get caught up in it. And um, I can imagine how nice it is to gratify my um, ambitions and needs and how that would be fun. But I only know it to be fun because I know how bad uh, the, the, the lack of gratification is. So I have the thirst. I've been in the desert, so I really know how great water is. And that's the only reason why I have any will to hold on to get to that glass of water. It is my thirst that I've built out of real pain. So it would have been better if I never was thirsty. Better to never have been thirsty. Maybe I should write that book. Then I thought about it and I said, the only people that you can put in the virtual reality have to be people that need. It's only their needs, it's only their desperation, it's only their loneliness or their, their need for uh, affirmation and all these other, you know, this, this bullshit psychology that would keep them playing the game and we're yeah, you really can't play, you know, uh, we are the champions and have this great champion moment unless you really had to earn it. Where do they get that psychology? Because most people have to earn it. You have to earn <coughs> your, your hunger and your, your deprivation. You have to earn your appreciation. That's the word I should have used, yes. You have to earn your appreciation, your passion. 
comes with a lot of pain. You can't have one without the other. And that's the poison pill. Your need has to be built out of, you know, time in prison, so to speak. You don't appreciate the freedom unless you've been in the jail. About pleasure having intrinsic value, Gary says that all pleasure comes from satisfying our addictions. What that does even matter? Pleasure is still... No, no, what does that even matter? It costs something. That means you already paid for it, you idiot. You fucking idiot. What does it matter how much you paid for it? Of course it matters how much. You put it on your credit card? Oh, you got you owe $50,000? Oh, then when you're going to drive the car, you didn't get it for free. You didn't just walk in and drive out with a free car. The pleasure isn't free. It costs. That's the whole point, you idiot. Oh, you. this guy is so fucking stupid. What the hell am I wasting time? A positive experience, whether it comes from satisfying our needs or not, it changes nothing. It changes everything. The whole point is, is what did you pay for it, you stupid idiot? Gary also thinks that we gain many positive experiences because we struggle to get them. And the struggle is bad. But no, the, the deprivation is bad. So let's just make sure we use the right word. Ugh. And it will be deprivation. Again, this does not make the positive experience any less. Yes, it does. Paying for it means that you have to, it has to give you back more than you paid for it. And that's the part you're not going to be able to explain how it does that. This is just making a bigger mess and cleaning up less of it and feeling good. And he didn't respond correctly to the surprise example. And the same is true for life. There's just no good. There's just bad to be evaded. And that's it. There's no other function. There oh, okay, so yeah, that's about as clear as you can get also. Bliss is just the byproduct of nothing harassing you. Evading the swords, evading the knives, evading the pinches, evading the, the negatives will put you in bliss. You're stopping the whip. There's no carrots. And your delusion that there's a whole big pile of carrot, this little carrot paradise you're going to lead us to, or you think the human race is in now, is such a delusional, disgusting description of the reality. Gary believes that I'm in favor of leading the humanity to a better place. Yes, that's exactly what you're defending as a solution to the problem. You're not giving us a plan for extermination, you're giving us a plan for perpetuation in some sort of drug-induced coma of, of dream delusions or something. You're, you're, you're just evading the simple solution and attempting some complex solution that doesn't sol solve the problem, that has you in the, in the seat where you will create the consciousnesses that must um, carry on in your deluded world where it matters how big their dick is or boobs or whatever, how attractive they are, how, how they gain gratification. A kind of utopia. I don't know why he believes that. I didn't say that in my video. Well, you certainly say it in the people you recommend, so that's what they're selling. You, you, I mean, you can't, you can't sit there and say, well, what about, and what about this guy, and what about that guy, and do all that kind of crap all the time, unless you take responsibility for the words they speak. Yo, I didn't say that in any of my videos. You didn't say anything in any of your videos about a realistic solution to any problem ever. That's exactly why you're a piece of shit, and you suck is because all you do is tear down. You don't build anything. It doesn't matter. And the fact is, though, you have no right to impose the negative. You have no right to ever stop, start whipping anyone. So if you can't guarantee it's carrots all the way down, you have no right to impose. You have no right to tell somebody else they have to pay for your profit. Fuck you. Gary screams that I don't have a right to impose. Okay, chill, 
I'm not in. All right, well now I'm done. Okay, I'm not gonna <laughs> fuck this chill shit. I mean, you're, you're too too stupid. You're just too stupid for the argument. You can't make an argument worth shit. Um, again, this is a really important subject. It's really important for people to understand what their life is and how it is in fact futile. And it's it's depressing and unsatisfying. But it is the truth, and if you give a shit about the truth, you give a shit about this conversation, and it's about, not about chilling, it's about becoming motivated to do something about it, not be an asshole. You're a lazy, useless sack of shit asshole. You're just wasting my time, okay? And you're, you're, you're just retarding other people with a stupid futility that doesn't need to exist. There is no futility here. There's just demotivators like you lazy assholes who tell other you know tend to be lazy assholes it's okay to be a lazy asshole it's okay to just run the fuck away because you don't want to deal with it all right it's okay to be just a, a lazy pussy and that's what you fucking are a useless waste of time all right it's probably enough of a video frankly chill dude yeah Buy some real clothes. Shit. <laughs> Just too stupid. Anyway. Yeah, sorry. If you were curious, go watch the video. I don't have any more curiosity. Uh, the subject's been covered as deep as he'll ever go. He'll never, ever, ever, ever make any kind of rational assertion about how it's we can get there by doing this, this, and this. He'll never advocate for anything. He'll never uh, exercise any will in any direction. He'll never do a damn thing to see that anything ever gets cleaned up, ever. Because he's a sack of shit, just looking for excuses to be a mopey, useless sack of shit. Okay, so, it really is enough. So, till the next time and such, I think I can probably say that. I don't know if I need to add anything. Well, I might add something. Who knows? Maybe I'll be in a different mood later and I'll add something. I can always do that. So that's fun. I can do this. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I really like this. Meow. <laughs> It's a gorilla, Gary, not a chimpanzee. Okay, got it. Anyway, so, um, yeah, well, it's either the end or it's not. I'll decide later, at some point in the future. I haven't gotten there yet. No. I am back. I decided to do more. Yes, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, we'll do more. Try to do it quicker. <laughs> See how that works out. Whatever. Illusional, disgusting description of the reality. Gary believes that I'm in favor of leading the humanity to a better place. A kind of utopia. I don't know why he believes that. I did... Well, fixing humans is going to take a long time and is a lot of work, so it's a lot more of an investment than a peaceful euthanasia, so that would be part of it. Um, obviously, if somebody's going to spend a lot longer dying and you need a whole bunch of morphine and a whole bunch of stuff to try to take care of their pain and suffering and all that kind of stuff, it's just obviously much more time and expense, so seems you must be for it. didn't say that in my video. I didn't say that in any of them. Okay, so just understand, it doesn't say anything about anything then. It's, your, it's the argument. So he has no plan he thinks is the best plan. Just let nature keep doing what it's doing, and we'll just pretend to, to wish it away, period. That's his solution. There's no solution. None. I, I mean, it just comes to mind, just because I saw the cat today, right? <clears throat> the mother cat. So she had five kittens, and there's only one left, right? And, um, you know, and the one left, you know, she she showed up and then, you know, she didn't want to step in the snow, so she went the other way. And then about two minutes later, the kitten came out from under a pile of crap, I guess, somewhere. And, uh, you know, I was looking for her. Um, but, you know, it's all kind of just a disgustingly sad story. And he just 
say, well, let the story keep happening. Four kittens dead, four kittens dead, four kittens, four to one, four to one, four to one, four to one, four to one. Just let nature keep doing this, grinding them up. Because it would be too big a horror if we just took one of that four, you know, and ended it forever. So we just make the tragedy happen once. And I'm not even suggesting the tragedy, right? I'm not suggesting we run kittens over and do all the horrible things that the way kittens die now. I'm talking about a, as peaceful a death as possible. So one death and it's over forever. And he's just saying, no, you can't do that. We have to do it over and over and over again. So of course that's what you're saying. You're overtly saying it. There's no, there's no other choice. If there was some other choice, I would be advocating for it. So show me the other choice and then I'll say, okay, fine, let's do that instead. Show me the other choice that solves the problem and does it cleaner and I'll be all for it. Less kittens die. Show me the method that works where less kittens die. Show me that. And I'll vote for it. My videos. Oh, interesting. Ah, it's always something, as they say. I don't know why the camera popped out. Let's just see. Maybe sometimes just to restart, I'll fix it. Ah, what you did. All right, sorry about that. Peace. It doesn't matter. And the fact is, though, you have no right to impose the negative. You have no right to ever stop, start whipping anyone. So if you can't guarantee it's carrots all the way down, you have no right to impose. You have no right to tell somebody else they have to pay for your profit. Fuck you. I guess his profit in this case is his inability to act. So his unwillingness to be Superman means he's going to have to clean up the mess. He's responsible for it. He didn't do what Superman's supposed to do. So you clean it, you clean it up. It's not my job. There is screens that I don't have a right to impose. Okay, chill. I'm not imposing anything on any. All right, this is where I said fuck you last time, right? So, um, it's not about chilling. Again, you are imposing. It's just silly to say doing nothing doesn't solve the problem. And doing wishful thinking doesn't solve it. And prayer doesn't solve it. And all this other crap doesn't solve it. So, you are doing it. So, don't just keep saying you're not doing anything. Because not all of us would love to just say, I didn't have anything to do with this. I didn't make this mess. It's not my problem. And yeah. Fine. Everybody wants to say that, but that is just words. From now on, it's yours, okay? You're endorsing it. You're feeding it. You're paying for it. You're financing it. You're part of it. You're breathing the oxygen the biosphere is providing. So don't tell me you're not part of it. You're not responsible. You're taking from it. So pay for it. Anyone? Impossible to come up with some definition of harm unless you think, well, I should have been told. <laughs> Why would telling you help? I had a bunch of things I wanted to get done. Well, is there any evidence that you needed to get any of them done? Or that any of them were going to fix anything? And clearly there's nothing to fix once all the things are, that are broken are destroyed. There's no, you don't have to fix the clocks. The clocks have also been evaporated. So you can't say, there's a, oh, there's a bunch of broken clocks left behind. No, there's no broken clocks left behind. There's nothing for you to do. No pictures for you to paint. So the clips he takes, I don't know why he took this one. I mean, obviously this one, I'm I'm analogizing it to the argument against the people who are actively uh, pro-life, okay? But again, I, I don't at all apologize by saying you're in their camp because you're feeding them. You're on their side. You're working for their argument. It can't be done. Nothing can be done. They want to hear that just as much as they're validated. Okay, saying there's no war to fight is the same thing as saying the war isn't worth winning. No walls to hang them on. Yeah, there's nothing you need to do. Everything was already done. About the red button, Gary says that my plans are irrelevant and there's no evidence that I need to do what I want to do. He says that a minute after screaming, but I have no... No, I didn't say that. So again, there's no minute after screaming. There's no screaming necessary. Yes, hysterical girls who don't understand what's happening might scream. You know, you might scream because you're afraid of a spider. Um, but there's no teeth in this one. All right to impose. Interesting. 
It shouldn't matter whether I have something important to do or whether I just... Oh, well, sure it does matter. It's logical. That's what the whole point of this is to do logic and what's in the best interest of sentient creatures and the future and um, the total end game book that will be written. And the, we have every interest in writing in the book. We didn't waste any suffering. So it's just silly to say it doesn't matter. Of course it does matter. And if you have some valid reason, some argument to make that uh, your existing will mean less suffering in the future, well then make that argument. But you don't have that argument. Like to stare at the moon. I'd say in Mendem has no right to impose on me and choose. Uh, again, I have every, I have the right of having a brain that can think. So just as I have a right to go fight Nazis, I have a right to go fight suffering causers. Um, same right. For me. And so again, everyone, there's no rational reason that we have to kill anyone. So one word says anti-natalism, clearly connecting it to the act of procreation. The other argument, and the Ethelist argument, is clearly there's no practical way to, through democratic process and speaking our opinions, to uh, persuade animals to use condoms. Uh, let's understand that these are democracies that decide to go to war, okay? I mean, they didn't overtly vote to go to war uh, against the Japanese, for example, but it was clearly by the election of your leaders and this is what they decide for us and blah, 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 blah. And that's the process. And so I'm arguing in some point in the future, the majority of civilized people will know it's not nice to eat animals, it's not nice to do a lot of things, and they're going to have laws against those things. And one of the things they're eventually going to have a law against is this reckless reproduction bullshit. That you just don't have a right to keep, um, you know, uh, recklessly doing a crapshoot with consciousness. Making four kittens and then killing, you know, three of them. Even if we could afford to make condoms in all these various sizes and shapes, uh, which we can't. So there's only one practical solution. That is one generation takes the hit. Just as the same exact thing is going to happen when the Earth blows up eventually. Those are scientific facts. The Earth isn't going to be eternal. It's not going to last forever. And someday every single living thing on the planet will have to be destroyed. So I'm not making anything new happen. I'm just accelerating when it happens. Well, another good argument that he won't have any frickin' counter-argument to. <laughs> What's he going to defeat that with? There's no defeating that argument. Simple truth is, I could brutally commit a, a, a horrible, you know, rape and homicide against the entire human race, and it wouldn't be worse than their final days on planet Earth. So again, you can't make an argument about the event, because the event's inevitable, asshole. Gary says that there's no reason we have to kill anyone, but then contradicts himself. I didn't, I didn't contradict myself at all. I'm saying there's no good reason. So we know that people don't have good reason. I, they all should be persuadable. They all should be able to get the 2 plus 2 logic here. It's not very complicated. They all should be able to concede to the argument. Yes, I understand. Having kids is dangerous and stupid. Okay, I get it. It's frivolous. It's a bunch of ego crap. It's all nonsense. There's no good reason to do it. Um, they should be able to, to understand. So when I say that no one has to, there's no law that says it has to go that bad way. I'm just giving you the pragmatic, practical, I'm just being honest and saying I don't really have the expectation that all the human beings have the intelligence to actually get with the program, that some may disagree. I'm not even sure of that, I mean, frankly. It's so obvious, and I'm saying once the vast majority of people are speaking to speak, uh, most of the people, I think, of the vast majority of them will concede to the argument, because there really isn't a counter-argument. Even if you believe in heaven and hell, you've got to understand, why would you have kids so you can risk putting them in eternal torture? Eternal torture? <laughs> why the hell will you risk somebody getting that as a present for their birthday? Fuck that. By saying that animals have to be killed. By everyone, I mean every sentient being, of course. Gary also says that so again, there's just absolutely no contradictions there, no 
deception, no switching of the bean under different cups or any of this horse shit. Um, so just what a liar and he didn't answer the question. What's your alternative solution? What's your, your the, what's the big uh, win plan? Where's your big win plan? Your plan sucks. I mean, there's there's two choices here you could say in a subtle manner. And let's just say there's two forces fighting with each other: the band-aid knitters and and the and the cure mongers. Okay, so I'm a cure monger. I want to go for the cure. Let's spend all the money on the cure. Let's cure malaria. Let's not keep making quinine and doing this and doing that. Let's cure the damn thing. No more mosquito nets. Let's not waste money on any other kind of band-aid. You know the victims. Let's spend all the money on ending the disease forever. Those are two rational arguments, two arguments where people could make, well, I don't think a cure is possible, so I, I really do want to have some kind of treatment for the sick, and I want to take, you know, spend some money on the sick people now. Um, <clears throat> but you're not doing either one, okay? You're too gutless to get into any camp. Your solution is, I'm going to turn around and walk away. You're so freaking lame. Button doesn't really create any new event because everyone ultimately dies and the earth itself will be destroyed. That's not what I said. I, what I said is there's going to be a final generation on earth that's going to have to, you know, the environmental conditions will get horrendous and they will be, they will be forced to succumb to them. Going by this logic, we could justify pillaging and burning the villages because everyone eventually dies. Exactly. I, I think you could actually justify that. That's absolutely, that's absolutely correct. I'm sorry it turns out that way. But it is just a fact that the world would be a better place if lots of people got run over by cars tomorrow. Just a fact. I mean, if we, if we said all the people who drive too fast, all of them drop dead tomorrow, the world would be a better place. It's just a fact. Okay, so so you can play this game that uh, it's, it doesn't work out. No, it actually does work out that way. That most 99% of the human race is garbage. I mean, they are just making a mess. They're not cleaning up their own mess, let alone in cleaning up anybody else's mess. They're shitty janitors, okay, and that's just a fact. Okay, they're running a deficit. That's why the world's turning brown instead of green, so to speak. It's because they're running huge deficits, monstrous deficits. You can go to the Federal Reserve and you can see the deficits sitting in there. Gigantic deficits. That's what people are running. And besides, a few billion years into the future, there won't be any life left on our planet. Uh, a billion, we're not talking anywhere near that long it's going to take for the Earth to run out of gas, but whatever, go ahead. It doesn't matter when, the point is still clear that all these people are accepting the fact, okay, that, um, you know, they're putting the future at jeopardy, at risk. Instead of being 7 billion people, it could be 17 billion people. So they're going to kill even more. This is a reductio ad absurdum of Gary's thinking. Sorry, there's nothing absurd, it's a fact. And you're just evading all of the facts. Well, it makes perfect sense to rational people. So I guess I would argue that that's why everybody ever fought a war or did anything else is because, yes, the future needs not to be run by those assholes. That was basically the argument that, yes, the, the sacrifice now will be worth it in the future. Now, I'd argue that we haven't done much with all those dead bodies um, in the sense that... Yeah, I'm arguing most of the wars yeah, it didn't work out all that well. Uh, the winners weren't all that better than the losers, frankly. You couldn't have done much worse with, you know, the, the victory. <laughs> the people who won didn't do much with their victory. The, the blood they wasted, they didn't smear it very well. There's not much to be proud of in terms of the civilizations we've built out of those dead bodies. It's pretty sucky. Gary says it would be perfectly fine to kill all people on an isolated island. I have to say that... Yeah, not for no reason, but to save, to save the torture and suffering of millions of more people. So just, I mean, it, it, could it be uh, uh, more dishonest for him to take that completely out of context and say, I just want to kill people on an island? No, the equation is you kill the one little group of people on the island and you save from torture, 
okay? 10 to 1, 100 to 1, a billion to 1. Huge savings in terms of profit. How many kittens you save by killing the one kitten. So more bullshit. And save from harm. Again, not save to live a silly life. Save from torture. But this is a perfectly consistent position. What's odd to me is that the ethicists I talked with say they wouldn't be fine with killing those islanders. So there are some important... This, I don't care, all right? I have no responsibility for anyone else calling themselves something. That's really not my job to go out there and find every single person who says, I'm an ethicist, and they don't know what the hell they're talking about. It's not my job. Divisions in ethicism itself. I don't see the division. So again, you talk to lunatics. I don't, okay? I can smell them a mile away kind of thing, so it's really not an issue for me. I really don't have these conversations that you say you're having. So I guess you're going out and looking for it, aren't you, fella? Yes, that's what you're doing. Well, so this is idiotic. So we already did solve the problem. Yes, it would solve the problem. You have some fantasy that life just poofs out of nowhere. I have scientific data that can demonstrate that it's a sequence of events that is so preposterously improbable, okay, that it's like rolling Yahtzee dice and having all the dice say five and they're all stacked on top of each other. It's an insane amount of improbable events, one-time events. Out of <clears throat> What's demonstrated without any reasonable doubt is rareness, not commonness. So the rareness argument, how rare, okay, maybe it's not that Yahtzee dice example, but frankly, I think it could be worse than that. It's such an unlikely event. Trillions and gazillions and bazillions and zillions of permutations. The whole fucking earth is fucking covered in body parts, in DNA, in all the parts that make a DNA. I don't even know why he would want to argue this. It's so fucking obvious. I mean, clearly, no other life form exists on planet Earth, even though it's covered in the molecules that are supposed to make life, not just water. It's not that it has water. Look, there's lots of water. It doesn't have anything living in it. Why doesn't some life form poof in it? Right? So it's not even so much that like it's got water and oxygen and all of these things. No, it's got the actual amino acids spread all over the planet. And none of them, none of them, none of them ever, ever, ever rearrange into some replicating life form. It just doesn't happen. A molecule, yet no other molecule, no other arrangement of the molecule, no subtle change to the molecule has done a single bit of evolving on Earth. Not in the deepest cave, not in the deepest ocean vent, not anywhere on this planet is it doing something else. Is it outside of our biological heritage? Outside of our evolutionary tree? Then what the first and only DNA molecule did. Gary rambles on and on about how improbable life is. This is supposed to be a response to my saying that exterminating everyone on an isolated island would leave other beings intact. Hmm. I oh, okay, so that's his answer. Hmm. So that's the best he could do. So he's got some idiotic notion that space is full of fucking life forms, okay, and that there's, oh, this is, a, Earth is just a minor cancer. There's a whole bunch of cancer out there. Okay, he has no evidence for it, zero, and he can't make a logical argument explaining how it's even possible. <clears throat> Especially thinking life, a feeling life. That, oh yeah, they all build consciousnesses that synthesize uh, uh, value and make uh, ouches. They all do that. All the, uh, all the evolving life forms and all the other planets, they all evolve sentience. Obviously, we can't build one. <clears throat> I'm saying there's nothing we can do about the rest of the universe. So if you want to play this, oh, the Earth is just an island thing. Well, yeah, that's the way it is. Um, you know, even a drone technology. So, so again, even even the island is rescuing 10 million. So it's still you're still way ahead. Just doesn't matter. There's no way of tra traversing the universe. So this is a person who's supposed to be 
agreeing that life is a blight, you know, uh, a, a, a grotesque, wasteful infestation, and it, doesn't it sound like he has, he's trying to make an argument defending it, defending its need to exist? Okay, by the time you get there, it doesn't exist, frankly. <laughs> So you'll never be able to do much about anything in the rest of the universe. If there was such a possibility or probability anyway, there's just no evidence that this isn't anything but the most bizarrely rare event. Once again, Gary says something about us not being able to do anything with some potential life in the universe, completely unrelated to anything I said. Oh, I, frankly, you just said it. You made this island comparison and said the island doesn't solve the problem. You said island, and then you let this big pause sit there and sit there and say, well, think about that, huh? You just did that, didn't you, asshole? Oh, yes, you did do that. So, fuck you in this word game. So, so he's using the word morality, which, again, is a just an absolute pile of shit rhetoric. I... I, I you know, that's I mean, why would anyone, <clears throat> you know, like uh, after, uh, you, know, you know, you could say some point in history, the, the uh, um, Scopes trial, uh, you know, some place in history where they just say, yeah, we're done with that word. That's the religious word, okay? Morality has to do with what a god's edicts or some kind of, you know, uh, statement from above. It doesn't have anything to do with science, it doesn't have anything to do with logic, it doesn't have anything to do with our capacity to reason, so why would we want to use that word? So why are these people keep trying to inject the word? So clearly their motivation isn't because they have a scientific argument, their motivation isn't because they have a reasoned argument, and obviously their motivation is, is defending the irrational morality arguments of the past. They're trying to tell us that morality is something you find under a rock. No, it isn't. Oh, you see it, even though it isn't there, like Sasquatch. Yeah. Are UFOs? One of the clearest things that if you're going to say, oh, there's no definition of ephalism, well, there is one out of my mouth. It certainly doesn't include any stupid, jerky little play with bullshit word morality in it. So just get to value ethics, shithead. Gary is indignant at me for using the word morality. And why shouldn't I? Shouldn't everybody, everybody who believes in evolution and in science should agree with me that, well, we really shouldn't call what we're doing religion, right? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. If we're going to say we're open-minded and that we're liberal and that we don't have taboos and we don't sit there and just beat things because nature says so... You know, we're, we're not afraid of snakes because, this, you know, we, we have a, an innate little unsettledness because of snakes. So, no, we don't fall for any of that kind of crap. We don't say morality comes from heaven, all right? It falls into your brain by just some magic. No, we're saying you have to make a rational argument. You have to defend it by showing facts, pointing to a reasoning why it's a good idea, all right? And so anyone in this argument who's not a silly religious kook shouldn't say, I love the word morality, let's defend it, let's keep using it, right? So you, everybody kind of kind of know, right? You, you can kind of see, even if you're leaning towards this sympathetic to this asshole, you've got to sort of be uncomfortable when he's starting to defend the word morality. He seems to think that atheism has nothing to do with morality. Is critically wrong. Well, again, it's, it's just horseshit. Morality isn't a real thing, okay? Morality is a silly way of defining right and wrong. It was demonstrated to be silly for thousands of years on planet Earth, and now we all smart enough to say, yeah, let's not use that because it doesn't work, okay? It's a stupid way to define right and wrong. You don't define it, okay, by calling it morality and pulling it out of the air. You define right and wrong by figuring out what has value and agreeing on what the assignment should be. Gary often implies that people have some obligations or that they don't have the right to impose or there is a bad and right thing to do. Right, and I defend it all with reasoning. I point out how the welfare of my brain is in fact equal sign welfare of other people's brain. I'm not in any way 
more worthy of comfort than they are. Well, that's the wrong word to use. Um, it's not a better for the universe to have a happy brain, my brain happy, and somebody else's brain not happy. These two things are equal. It's like mass and velocity equaling momentum. <laughs> that's all there is, okay? There's just the state of the brains, and that's it. And mine is just as valuable as theirs. And once you understand that, once you know your brain isn't special and it doesn't need special food and it doesn't entitled to special and it isn't all that crap, then you know it's all equal to the same thing. And you can just put it on a piece of paper and you can use a little line to just make notches on a piece of paper and say, well, what state are the brains in? And so, yes, it's a mechanical, uh, mathematical, equation it just doesn't have anything to do with any personal notions of how important I think I am how how important I think I am is not relevant it doesn't get to be written on the piece of paper these are all moral concepts Gary likes the term bullshit value ethics maybe he's not aware that morality and ethics are often used as synonyms and I've, I've protesting it. That's right. I'm overtly telling you that I have no interest in having a conversation with religious kooks. So we're, I'm not doing that. They're not the same thing to me at all. Their history isn't the same at all. So anyone coming with moral codes, uh, if they don't have arguments about how they're ethically rational, then forget it. I don't want to hear about your silly codes. He just said unjustifiable. So it clearly is justifiable. So, that, no, no context to that bit either. That must have been a semantic effort, a, a error, <laughs> a typo or something. Um, no, there, it is reasonable. It is justifiable. There's nothing to say it's unjustifiable. That's true. Kerry thinks I made a typo by writing unjustifiable. <sighs> nope. I indeed meant unjustifiable because all other ethicists I spoke with claimed that exterminating those on the isolated island would be unjustifiable. So again, I have no responsibility. I don't know who these people are. You won't cite anybody's name. You're such a coward, you know, except for mine. Um, and, you know, you, won't, you sit there, why don't you show pictures of them and do all this other nonsense you do from your little behind your stupid rock. You're too afraid to show your own face, but you'll give power to people who will sit there and invade other people's personal lives in a disgusting manner. You won't even delete from your stinking comment section my name, you stinking weaselly piece of shit. And here you are talking, uh, you know. So I have no responsibility for whoever these people are you're talking to, okay? If they won't fix the problem, then they're not on my team. I didn't sign them up. They're, okay, it's not, I have no responsibility for what some wing of the Catholic Church is doing. Maybe most Catholics don't like Protestants very much. They don't like these wing people, these fringers who are taking their, you know, taking their religion and bastardized it. Yeah, I don't have any use for these anti-natalists you're talking about, whoever the fuck they are. So this was my response to those ethicists' response to the problem of the isolated island. Again, I, you either argue with me or you argue with them, but you don't sit there and do both. That's just such bullshit. So I should force into your mouth all the words by every dissident, every person who has said something negative about Emendum. Pile that on top of you. Now, I can give you responsibility for what you allow in your comment section. So all the words and all the statements you allow to just sit there in your comment section, all the lies, I can force you to take responsibility for those. Of course, Gary has a different position and my response doesn't apply. <clears throat> Well, then why are you saying it to me? Why is it part of something directed at me if it's you're talking to them, whatever the fringe church is? doesn't matter. Again, it has nothing to do with crimes of guilty or sacrificing or punishing or any of those things. So again, it's a lie. It has to do with protecting, protecting protecting the future victims. They are a realistic probability. We're making them not a realistic probability. Okay, that's all that's taking place. Their voice is the one being heard. Their voice is the one being listened to. That's all it's about. Right, and let's understand, their voice is millions of times, millions of voices by comparison. 
So it's not just one for one. We're not just shooting one person to save one person. We're not um, stopping, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're not shoving one person into the meat grinder, okay, to save one person from falling in the meat grinder. Their, the, their profit is huge. The future is gigantic. The present, very small. About the other voices, they have rights to their opinions. I'm just saying their opinions that I have a right to impose is not a useful opinion. It's not going to overwhelm the victim saying, fuck you, leave me alone. The right to deny is stronger than your right to impose. And the innocent cannot be sacrificed for the greater good, whatever that would be. Well, of course they can. It's perfectly rational if you can kill one person to... Yeah, it depends on what your greater good is. So again, as long as your good is saving more people from being dragged behind the car, then it's justifiable to drag somebody behind a car. But until then, it's not. If you don't have any good you're producing, you can't make a victim. That's the simple argument. And the only good you can produce is an absence of harm, an elimination of a harm. So that's basically the only checker that has real value in this checker game. Stop a million people from going through some horrible fate. Um, it's perfectly rational. There's nothing irrational about it at all. It's perfectly rational economics. It's perfectly sensible. It's, that's just the way it turned out, sorry. I wish life was fair, but it's not. That's a fact. We're trying to make it less unfair, jackass. So you can't say, well... Uh, so you're just saying... <laughs> you're just burying yourself by playing my argument. You're just burying yourself. You can't dig your way out of this in any kind of reasonable way. There's no rational counter-argument to the fact that you don't have a right to perpetuate an unfairness and that you are basically perpetuating it. You're supporting the perpetuators. Well, it's unfair to punish them. Well, the, it was unfair to punish the other jackasses who are going to be the probabilistic victims. So those probabilistic victims have more unfairness on their side. They have a bigger unfairness argument to make. So, so is that simple? But no, the, how do you escape it? You can't really escape the logic. Like I said, even if it came on me, you know, I have to be tortured forever. Uh, I've got to climb up on the cross and I have to be tortured, not just for a day, but now forever. You know, despair, billions. Uh, you have to climb up and hang on the cross. You got to, it's, it's no choice. There's no other reasonable alternative solution. You got no other option here. That's what you got to take. That's what you got to accept. So it's not like I'm saying I should be spared from the same sort of judgment. If somebody can make a good reasoned argument that it's time to throw me into the meat grinder, um, as long as it's a good reasoned argument that it's going to save billions, then do it for fuck's sake. Yeah. Why, why the hell would I disagree? It would be impossible to disagree. But yes, it all depends on what people think, you know. Obviously, people don't care who they throw under what wheel for what purpose, and they don't have any grand plan to save humanity. All they're doing is trying to kill people or harm them. Like the trolls this guy defends and, and comforts. Oh, you don't, your little argument, I want my rights, doesn't mean anything when your rights mean you're going to be imposing or violating their rights, asshole. Your trespass is much larger than theirs. They didn't trespass on anything. They didn't violate anybody's rights. You violated theirs. Gary says that omnicide is not about any sacrificing. Well, actually it is. Those who don't contribute to the perpetuation of the cycle of life are... All right, so again, there's no such thing. You cannot breathe air, okay, without buying the slave-made product. This is the fact. Every breath you take is made out of that biosphere's pain and suffering. It's a fact. Every single breath. ...are being sacrificed for the greater good. Then, Gary switches to say that it's perfectly rational to sacrifice the few 
for the benefit of the many. <clears throat> and the two aren't in any, any conflict at all. So again, there's no hypocrisy or duplicity in the statements. They're just clear. Yeah, reality sucks. The choices suck. He uses the word rational with some very unique meaning, it seems like. I would say that it's unjustifiable. Whether it's rational under Gary's definition or not is irrelevant. Okay, so we, we've said it already. Okay, so we already got it. Uh, you're, you're defending being irrational. I'm defending being rational. I say logic is the way. You say logic, fuck it, it's inconvenient. Um, you're saying it's unjustifiable by no rational argument defending how it's unjustifiable. You're not explaining how it's unjustifiable. You're just saying it's a moral edict that the present people are much more valuable than the future people. You're saying it overtly. You're just saying it overtly. They have magic meaning. Okay, you can never use them to spare the future harm. You can never use present harm to spare future harm. Ever, 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 ever. It's somehow a moral edict. You have the morality. You have the religious code. Uh, and you have no way to explain how it makes any sense at all. And again, the average person kind of knows how this works out. I mean, we kill some of our best and brightest in wars. I mean, we're sacrificing things that are overtly precious. I mean, it's overtly precious. And of course we know we're getting something for it. Okay? We're getting something that has to be gotten. We have to have it or we can't continue on. We can't just accept. So we must fight. All right? And that's just the way it is. But to say it's unjustifiable, well, it's horrible. It sucks. But of course it's justifiable. So again, it's just a silly word to use. Ju unjustifiable is a moral edict. You're saying I can't justify it with reasoning. Of course I can justify it with reasoning. And a ton of those soldiers who are now dead would say, yeah, well, I'd do it over again. I mean, I'm sure some of them would say I wouldn't go anywhere near this bull. I'd run like hell. But I'm sure some of them, you know, if they could, we go interview them, they'd say, yeah, I didn't have a choice. Okay, it's horrible, it's terrible, it's awful, but what are, what are you going to do? There's, there's no other options. Somebody had to bite the bullet and I bit it. In ethics, we're often interested in finding out what's justifiable or morally... In ethics, we are. Who are you? Who, who are you? What's, what's this you group? Is that what you call yourselves, you? Good. Not what's merely... No, I think you call yourself me. I think that's your group, the Mies. Rational. At the end, Gary says I violated the rights of the future people, probably by bringing them into existence. That's not true. Oh, no, you financed and supported and defended and did everything to make it possible for them to exist. That's the, the bottom line. So it's your failure. You had the, the capacity to rescue them and you wouldn't put the bridge down because you thought it was unjustifiable. And that's simple, that's the simple truth. The, the millions are sitting there, you thought the bridge was gonna hit a little kid and, and smash his skull so you wouldn't put the bridge down so the millions had to be tortured. You made a bad decision. You're choosing the wrong choice. It's stupid. It's that plain, it's plainly stupid. All right, and the only way you're justifying is because you think some God somewhere is gonna praise you for it and say, oh, good choice. Because, yeah, that was unjustifiable. Would have been terrible if the outcome would have been really great instead of total failure. That would have been totally against, I'm the god of failure. I love failure. Failure. Irrational failure. Let's have as much of that as possible. Let's do everything the wrong way, uh, you know, like the human race. Let's put solar panels on roofs. Let's do everything stupid and wasteful. And you're just the icon for that. Stupid and wasteful. Of course. I haven't violated the rights of the future people, nor do I plan to. to you. Your words are your weapon, and you're doing it right now. Right now, you're suffocating the future victims. You're taking the, the, your, your ugly rhetoric and you're shoving it in their throats and shoving it in there, suffocating them right now. That's what you're doing, you idiot. You moron. You're giving power to the people who wish them dead, wish them tortured. You, it's perfectly intuitive to me. Imposition, yeah, I get it, sucks. 
avoid it wherever possible. And if you can't avoid it in, in serious cases, well, then yes, you have to you have to sacrifice your liberty. Your liberty doesn't overcome that basic liberty right to be left alone. Gary says that tallying up the bads and the goods across individuals is intuitive for him. Ah, uh, whatever. The, I never said any such crap, but whatever. <laughs> it's just, it's just more horse shit. Uh, no, I can reason and uh, I'll share my uh, thought process. Yes, that's intuitive. I understand language, I can speak language, I talk language. Yes, I can do that. He says that virtually immediately after saying that ephilism is not based on negative utilitarianism. Gary's ignorant. Uh, <clears throat> I have no interest in your labels, okay? So you're saying it's based on. It's not based on it. It's based on looking at evolution and saying, oh, what a horror story. It's a meat grinder. What does negative utilitarianism have to do with saying, hey, you can't build something out of a meat grinder. That's the wrong thing to build it out of, okay? That's not a good car seat, a meat grinder. It doesn't work. Let's get that out of there. If you can't get that out of there, let's not build this little toy because it's way too dangerous. So just more horse shit. I, I don't have to have an opinion of what the, any of this other crap is. All I have to do is say it's too expensive and demonstrate it with a couple of logical facts and I'm done. I don't have to label myself any kind of utilitarian or anything else. I don't have to have a label at all. I can recognize dangerous objects and I'm saying it's too dangerous. People shouldn't be allowed to put children over that. They shouldn't be able to dangle swords over kids heads. I don't need to be a negative anything to be able to figure out. No, 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 no. You have that on your drawing board? No, no, you can't build that. It's too stupid. This is showing. Now, if you were saying, oh, we're going to torture one person to save a bunch of people, not to go to Disneyland, but to save people from being tortured. Well then, yeah, the little cost to the present individual be accepted. The cost to one generation to prevent harms from billions of generations, yes, that's acceptable. If I can kill one cat today and prevent 453,000 kittens from being slaughtered tomorrow in some brutal way, run over and in other ways uh, starved and, uh, you know, killed by attritions and all kinds of... Ugh, you know, how is he going to... How's he, you know, there's no counter-argument but through glib, selfish nonsense. How do you in any way make any kind of argument that, yes, of course... You have to do the hard work. Yes, yes, you have to euthanize them. If it's going to prevent billions, yeah, that's what you have to do. Of uh, uh, miseries. Now I'm doing it because I'm rational. Gary says it would be accepted to torture one person to save more people. Accepted by who? I'm saying it's the logical imperative. There's no way of escaping the truth of it. So anyone who denies its truth value is denying a fundamental, all the facts point to it. There's no way to evade it except to say your consciousness is special. Again, it doesn't work mathematically. It can't work mathematically. You can't make a reasonable argument that you're worth it. And this is the fact. You can't make a rational argument that the one kid who's hit by the drawbridge is worth torturing one million people for. He's not. His welfare just can't be made into that. And only by some spiritual mumbo-jumbo retarded voodoo bullshit is there some rational way where you can say, somehow I made a right decision. I made a huge profit. No, you made a huge loss. You failed dismally to do the right thing, to do the sensible thing, to do the logical thing, to do the profitable thing. Well, not by the tortured one. And who gives you the right to torture this? I, I've already defended my right in terms of being a logical being that can defend my actions. So I'll defend them by stating logically why it's an imperative, why I can't evade the logic of it. I can't believe 2 plus 2 equals your 3. I know 2 plus 2 equals 4. I did the math. It's solid. Okay, you can't evade it. It's just an, it's just there sitting as an obligation. 
win, lose, succeed, fail, uh, profit, dismal and horrible loss. Innocent person. That's right. No one. Gary also says he would kill one cat to prevent 453,000 cats from terrible futures. Yes, we already know that because he's a negative utilitarian. It makes I said some more bullshit about being a negative utilitarian. It has nothing to do with the fact that I um, think the negative state is more valuable than the positive state. It has to do with the fact that I think it's an unacceptable uh, not to sit there and <clears throat> gain. Okay, no matter what the positives would be, you're gaining the absence of the negatives, and that's just a fact. So again, he's again just understand his argument. He's implying that the positive value is something, and that that's what we are actually losing something of value. That somehow the math doesn't work because the positive value is so big that we are losing this huge amount of positive value. So don't be fooled, you phony anti-nihilist who support this this weak pussy. Okay, he's defending the opposite of negative utilitarianism. I mean, by trying to use the rhetoric against me, he's obviously, okay, giving the words less meaning. He's implying that there's some other utilitarian philosophy that makes more sense. Isn't he? Sense on this particular normative ethics, but he hasn't convinced me that this ethics is the correct one. <clears throat> and I, Fine, I haven't convinced you, so what? That has nothing to do with your slanderous and crappy and shitty arguments where you're putting words in my mouth that aren't there and calling an act of mercy an act of malicious murder. Okay, you're the one sitting here bending the truth. I can live with the truth, okay? Yeah, no, I'm, nothing I'm talking about is going to make somebody say, gee, I'm in such a good mood. That's such a happy story he told me. I realize that isn't going to happen. Alright, so I don't mind that. You saying, oh, you're in, un unconvinced, and I'll just say you're unconvinced because you're a selfish, glib cunt. Uh, and that's the only reason. You're too tied to your own little happy stories that you've told yourself, and your own little jingle bells life. Alright, but that's not the way the real world works, fuckhead. And I'm sorry you're, you can't accept that the, the world comes with these obligations, and I'm sorry you don't like that you have to accept responsibility for the fact that you're, ble you're breathing torture right now. That you're feeding off of it. All right, you. So you can't understand the difference between sacrifices that have to be made to save people from harm and sacrifices of uh, being made to merely gratify superficial and trivial desires. Gary thinks I don't understand the difference between making sacrifices to save okay so just understand he just premised this with a whole spiel about negative utilitarianism implying that negative utilitarian is an incomplete theory <laughs> so, so yeah just just understand how insincere his words are someone and making sacrifices merely to satisfy our trivial desires this is a gross misrepresentation. Now, we already showed that that's exactly what you are, okay? You're arguing really against the whole point, right? What other point is it than him? I've never labeled myself a negative utilitarian in any big way. I mean, of course I've said that, yes, of course I'm a negative utilitarian. But it doesn't mean anything, in my opinion. As a philosophical definition, it's as ambiguous as you can get. So the hell with it. It doesn't, it's not, it's, it's just not very useful in the conversation, in my opinion. So why would he want to plop that label on me unless he thinks there's something wrong with that label? Why would he want to do that? I've never claimed these things are the same. And that in evolution... You know, right, right, you don't claim it, but you argue for it. Okay, that's the whole sneakiness of you. You're pretending, okay, you're just pretending. You're a spy. Uh, you're a, you're a, a, you know, you're, you're just a subversive. You're just a, you know, um, you know, you're using, just using rhetoric in this little evil manipulative way. And then clearly you're showing your manipulative ways. <laughs> All right. So there's no, there's nothing complicated about what your motivations are in the sense that you've made it overt. You are defending some sort of notion, okay, that there is something worth preserving. When we're talking about the bigger picture of the animal world, 
clearly the preponderance of these tightrope walkers fall into the daggers. They get eaten by the crocodile. They get bitten. I mean, they all die, right? <laughs> and the vast majority of them don't do it pleasantly. All right. So we'll probably end here for now. And uh, I guess we'll try to make another, try to f complete this uh, irritating task. Um, yeah, so I guess I don't even need to reopen that. So at least I'll know where I am. So I must be at least three quarters. Hopefully. Eww. So, all right. So, uh, uh, just to, just for fun. <laughs> then we'll move on um, to... Uh, There'll probably be more. It's probably going to be a two-hour video. All right, should be back for the final little bit. It's only a minute and something left, so let's get this over with. Blah 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 blah. You can make it a little bit bigger, but we'll just leave it in here for now. By the cobra, all of that shit happens over and over and over again. Their lives are short, miserable, and hard, and their death is brutal. That's the truth, and you're saying you're okay with that because some of them live and lay eggs, and that's good. Gary, again, thinks I'm in favor of reproduction. Yes, you're in favor of. There's, there's, there's only the two choices. Like I said, I wish there was a better solution, but there really isn't. There's just war. That's it. There's, there's no other way to beat the Nazis. There's no other way to stop them. There's no other way to create the world you want, the one we need to defend. Okay, there's slave owners. You have to stop the slave owners. That's just the way it is. There is no, there's no other solution. And you keep pretending there is. And that's the real offensive part, is you're just denying an obvious truth. There's no other solution. There's no better path to a solution that will actually work. Sitting in the lifeboat going, well, we should debate it forever. That's not going to get you any. That's not going to save you, right? You're in the lifeboat. That's not going to save you. You know, wishing that somebody doesn't have to jump in the water. That the boat can carry all these people. The big storm's coming. Big storm's coming. You know that the boat's not going to, it's going to capsize if some people don't jump out of the boat. You know that's the truth. And you're saying, well, let's not do anything. Let's all just drown. Let's just sentence the future to perpetually do this over and over and over again. Let's fail dismally. When you know there are strategies that will succeed and you have to choose one of them. And you just don't have the balls to choose anything. You're that bad. You're that disabled. You're that dysfunctional that you can't make any choices. That's straw manning level master. No straw man. I'll end with some concluding remarks. How Gary seems to think that I'm in favor of the game of life or that I'm a pro-natalist. Both assumptions are incorrect. No, you're behaving just like one, okay? So that's it. You're behaving just exactly what the pronatalists need. They need you. Their argument fails without... You're a huge help to them because they're irrational and they need somebody on the inside to create all kinds of uh, uh, friction and fire. They need something to break the any kind of rational continuity that might exist. They need you to fuck the other guys up so when they show up they can win. You know, that kind of thing. You're, you're, just, you're just one of their little secret weapons. Okay, the fence sitters are always, they just get in the way, right? I mean, the good guys, I got the Nazi right in my scope, and then the fence sitter just gets right in the way. I can't shoot the Nazis through you, idiot. <laughs> We're not going to be able to hit the target with you assholes in the way. Gary doesn't quite get what's the purpose of a critique. It's not to provide a better solution. Uh, then it's useless. It's absolute nonsense. So what's the point? We're in the lifeboat and some asshole. I say, okay, half of us have to jump in so we can draw straws. Uh, we can like give a test, you know, and see who can calculate the most numbers in their, their head, like who can divide the biggest numbers. Uh, we can ask, ask questions like how many kids do you have and how many people are dependent on your wealth, your, your, your salary. We can, we can do lots of different ways to figure out who has to go in the water, but, you know, people have to go in the water. Okay, it's just the way it is, okay? So, yeah, we, let's critique my solution. You're critiquing all solutions. You're saying we will accept no solution that involves people going into the water. Well, that's guaranteed failure. So if people don't go in the water, you've guaranteed failure. 
and that's all you're saying. I will guarantee failure. I will not save the future. I will fail to show up to save the day. That's all you're saying. I'm, I'm, I'm going to eat kryptonite so I'm no longer Superman. I have the power right now. I have power. I have power. And you're throwing your power away. It's that obvious. That simple. No, no other, nothing else to be, needs to be said. You're the problem, not the solution. Your critique is absolutely useless. Without an alternative suggestion for a dire circumstance, it is, it is obscene to be critiquing okay, anybody's choice if you don't have one. If your choice is let the, the bitch burn in the fire, okay, your critique is irrelevant and meaningless. Show up with an alternative solution or shut the fuck up. You're too silly. Gary doesn't recognize that he's a negative utilitarian. I don't care. Okay, so again, this is this is so irrelevant to me. As a, I, I, my philosophy isn't about utilitarianism. My philosophy is about how life absolutely is brutal and sucks and is inefficient, and it's in its um, taking care of the precious commodity of consciousness. I don't give a fuck about this stupid utilitarian crap. Obviously, I believe in logic and utilitarian implies logic. So yes, I'm for logic. And yes, I ultimately would argue that there is no positive value. I've overtly said it, okay, that it's all whip. And so with the whip, you can have the illusion of positive when they take the whip away. But there's no carrots in this game. We're just fighting to be whipped less. Fact, fact. So yes, by all, I guess all utilitarian type people would say, negative utilitarians especially, they'd say, yes, if I use that metaphor, if I drew that image and put that as a logo for being a negative utilitarian, the fact that there's no carrots, there's just whips, <laughs> um, they'd probably agree. But who cares? Why do you find the word important? That's the question to ask. Like you find the word morality important. Why do you wish to subscribe to me things I'm not talking about and I don't think are relevant? Why do those things mean something to you? Gary should be making arguments that the position of sacrificing the few for the benefit of the many is justifiable and a correct means of conduct. Uh, yes, that's exactly what I've done. I mean, I, just, I can't deny the math. I've even done the, like I said, sign me up. If you can show a way where me being horribly tortured will spare some kid getting cancer or something, sign me up. Rather than merely stating this sentiment in various examples and analogies. Some effilists would not destroy an isolated island while... Okay, so he's saying this shit, he's not naming any names, he's saying they're somehow effilists by some standard, like he's proven they're effilists, like they're more than just saying they are, so again, I could just do this to you and say some Catholics think the Pope's an idiot, some Catholics think abortion is fun, and some Catholics do... I could do that all day long to the Pope. Well, what the fuck? What, that's supposed to mean something to him? Hey, his logical argument is, well, they're not really Catholics and they're going to fucking help. Very would. This is a contentious point. Seems like Ephilism is not clear enough for Ephilists themselves. Oh, fuck you. You're just such a, you're, this is such a lame argument that I couldn't turn right back on you in every single case. So just tell me what the fuck you are. What are you, a mediocre uh, sit on your buttocks? Uh, what, what, uh, play with your dick a kiss? Uh, pick your nose a kiss? What the fuck kind of retard are you? And I'll go find some that are even more retarded than you and I'll blame you for them. I'll tell you, I'll say, aha, look, your whole philosophy is corrupt because you have some retards in it. You know, retards you never give a badge to. You never said, oh, he's also a pick a nose a Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a real strong pick a nose a you know, what the fuck, asshole? This is such a lame, 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 lame. Oh, you're finishing with this big, tired whimper. What a whimper of an argument you're finishing your fucking goddamn opus with. You're this fucking pile of shit, and you finish it with an argument this fucking weak. I will, I will guilt you by association. Just to know what it's on about. Calling others stupid doesn't make you smart. <laughs> well, recognizing it probably does. 
Uh, you have to be smart to know what it is. At least that's true. And again, if you want to have some sort of smart contest, I'm all in, okay? You got some money you want to bet, and we'll have a little smartness contest. I can figure out that four kittens are worth more than one kitten. I can figure that much out. Apparently you can't. And I sure know a billion is a lot more than one. So I can figure that out. You know, I think I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you by a long shot in a smartness contest. Thank you for your time. Yeah, fuck you. So just know the enemy. This is the enemy. The little jesters, right? They they were also just a piece of propaganda, a little propaganda tool. The king invented this idea, you know, just to mock the idea of criticism, to mock it, to make fun of it. So it muted all criticism by creating his own critic that was a fool and an asshole. So he created a critic that was a fool and an asshole just so he could make all the other critics look like fools and assholes. And he's playing the same game. I'm an anti-natalist. I care about the, the sensitive little animals. I care about their welfare. I care about the future. I care about the suffering. And he's just fucking pretending, people. All right? He's not on your side. He's not on the side of the suffering. He's not on the side of the victims. Okay? His rhetoric is all pointed to creating some sort of doubt and some sort of mystery and some sort of, oh, we can't figure it out. It's beyond our means. We can't be superheroes. We can't come to the rescue. We can't do anything. He's a feudalist, a fatalist, and a coward, and a selfish cunt. All right? And he's just put on this little suit to pretend to be your ally, but he's not your ally. So it's okay. Go ahead and hate me. Go ahead and say, oh, Gary's too brutal. Gary's too rough with his rhetoric. Gary's too harsh. Go ahead. Complain about all that shit all you fucking want. But don't follow this kind of idiotic logic, because this guy is not on your side. He doesn't want what you want. He doesn't want it to end. Okay, he wants to sit there and sink the fucking boat that would save the day. <laughs> okay, he's trying to sink the rescue boat. Alright, <clears throat> so till the next time and such. Do a little bit of this just to indulge me. Yeah, just indulging me. La, 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 la. I really do like that corner thing. I have to figure out how to capitalize on that. Anyway, so, till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. Da-da-da-da-da. I have to change that once a week, maybe. <laughs>